tonight. Oh, we about to get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, down, uh, I'm ready. Our crew was there as Ward 8 Council Member Trayon White left the D.C. federal court after being charged with bribery. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Simone D'Alba. Prosecutors elect. Have you ever been in the same place with this guy? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, man. Um, he's, I don't know, man. He questioned with nobody in Ward 8 could really tell you what he's doing. Sometimes I just randomly ask people. Nobody knows what he's doing. Like, people act like they're going to mess up. We're going to see. You, you, yeah, let's see. Let's see what it will happen. It agreed to accept $156,000 in cash payments to pressure D.C. government employees to extend contracts for two companies to provide violence. Wow. Wow. To pressure D.C. government employees to extend contracts for two companies to provide violence intervention services in the district. This afternoon. We violence intervention. Violence intervention. <laughs> hey. Wait, wait. I hope they talk about like the total amount of the contracts. I think they're gonna mention it's insane. Yo, we always talk about how that stuff is big business. How it's a yep. it's a it's a racket, it's a it's a it's a hustle. And it's been a hustle. That that violence interrupt that um ex offenders yeah. helping yeah. offenders return into the community, all that stuff. That's a hustle. Do those programs even work though? No, nah, they did studies in DC. Yeah, they did studies in DC to show that the programs don't work, that money, they're not getting nothing in return. And DC is one of the most violent places in America still. So the so taxpayers no. really don't get no return on investment. No, no nothing. Wait till they tell you the amounts, these two pro just two programs. Wait till they say the amounts. We have team coverage on this high profile case. Our Lionel Donovan is in Ward 8 with new reaction from the community on this charge. But first, let's begin with our Rafael Sanchez Cruz. He was inside the courtroom when that charge was read. Rafa, walk us through the details of the investigation. Yeah, Simone, the nearly 40 page criminal documents have photos like this one, which show council member Treyon White allegedly accepting envelopes with cash inside anywhere from $5,000 to $15,000. Now, the FBI says they have White accepting these bribes on video. Now, the 40-year-old was released today by federal... Yo. <laughs> hey, yo, his goose is cooked. They got what is this Bama? <laughs> they making an example out of him, man. Yo, yeah, yeah, where did he... Straight out of bed. Where did he get the kente cloth bathrobe? Hey, I'm telling you. Look, he had the tie on. He had to get the cloth tie on in other pictures. Yeah, Yo, true. true. Yo, this is a shield. This is like the yeah. signaling. I'm black and he black, so don't ask me too many tough questions. Don't look at what I'm doing too much or I'm going to cry racism. And people see all that stuff, they're oh shit, don't leave him alone. He gonna cry racism if he do anything. That's what that's all that stuff is, man. It's a signal. This dude don't know shit about Africa. He don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? This is all right. bullshit. Grifting. Yeah, grifting it. Look, they got you on camera, dude. Your goose is cooked, man. Yeah, he might not know about know. Africa, but he know about the game, though. He know about the game. <laughs> nah, I mean, he ain't know he was getting listen. This is like yeah. those women that want to kill their husbands and shit and try to hire a hitman and a hitman be on the cover. Couch. Yeah, it's because an idiot. <laughs> right, right. This they got him on audio saying wild shit. Oh my god, his his he's done. Son. I need to open yeah. up a program, man. For real. Oh what shit! Are you gonna call hey, it? Hey, you stand bass for kids. Yo, hey, you know it's it. crazy though. In um in like 2015, 2016, when, when I told I'd be talking about sometimes the, the joint I was doing in Baltimore, I reached out to his people to try and bring it to DC. This was before like all this crime was going through the roof. It was just going up. And I tried to reach out to his people, radio silence, because he was so concerned. He's been concerned about the computer. But when it when it became profitable, 
Now all of a sudden he invests in it and violence prevention. Okay. <laughs> Look at him there. Wow. Wow. And listen, man, he probably didn't think that your friend's program was lucrative enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the but the crazy thing is um the council member in Ward Five, Kenyon McDuffie, he reached back to me and we, you know, what I mean, we we coordinated stuff. And then he turned that into the what's now called the NIRAG. It took forever. But he, his out of genuine concern, yeah, he was, I believe, Kenny McDuffie. Tryon, I don't know, man. And look at him now. It's crazy, too, because I was I used to say this, like, Tryon never said nothing. But now look at him. Crazy. Yeah, he, he's, um. listen, I've been in the same place with him, and I've seen him, you know, operate in the, amongst the people and whatnot. And he's very young, man. Like he's young. He's not like yeah. Who he, he's my age. He's not. Yeah, he's not who he would be when he gets older. Um, but all that side of town, man, to be a councilman over there, where um, it's just like it's different over there. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the people are. They need stuff. Like they really, really need stuff, and they yeah rely on you know stuff like that and, and, and a lot of people are not working a lot of people are um involved in the street life a lot of people um have substandard educations a lot of people um just um have a mindset that's very um hood you know what i'm saying a very hood mindset yeah absolutely and, Politics is kind of like a big boy games to them. So it's like in order to be the politician from over there, you do have to promise to give them a lot of stuff for this and take care of little stuff like their needs, um, like basic, like, oh, uh, we're going to um, like the time I was there over there, remember Greater Southeast Hospital? Oh my gosh! They yeah, a little vaguely. Yeah, yeah. He was. It was, right, it was right. an event where they had a go-go band and everything down there, and they were trying to keep it open. So um, I, I ended up down there with, at that event, and um, it was in the parking lot of Greater Southeast, and it was it was hood down that motherfucker. But <laughs> um, yeah, niggas had bikes. And bikes came out. It was it was it was it was it was sketchy, Jack. But it was a a political event to try to keep the hospital open because if they close that hospital, there will be the closest. None. Yeah, why, why should the hospital sit? You know what I'm saying? Or the joint on um yeah the joint on Southern Avenue, what's that joint? But that's on the is that Maryland? That's that's greater. That's the one. That's the greater Southeast. Is they changed? Oh, the name. okay. They changed the name. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay, yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the so that was the only they 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 closed. They ended up closing down part of it and making it open for like some services, but it wasn't like a full. It's not like a full hospital anymore. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So yeah, I was he he was doing that and he was trying to keep the hospital open, and but. The, the tax base over there and the people over there, they don't generate enough to, um, you know, for, for the services, but they demand so much. Like, that's where all yeah. the bodies dropping. That's where all the gunshot victims is. That's where yeah. all the chicks have babies. That's where all that stuff is happening, but they don't, they can't fund it. Right. You did what I'm right. saying? With their with yeah. their tax dollars. Yeah. And um, stamps they over there so is much, higher. Yeah. They need so much other stuff that the pot they got over there is so much stuff that they need, man. So I, I listen, my, I, I understand how being a politician on that side of town has a lot of unique challenges, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, not that, for sure. Yeah, for sure. They ain't going to deal with You did? Yep. Envelopes with cash inside anywhere from five thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars. Now the FBI said, "Man, who watched the wire? Who remember um Clay Davis? Yeah, the Rain Man or Rainmaker or something." 
that's the type of guy he 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 like he gave me like a young version of Clay Davis, not you know vibes. You know who Clay? You know what I'm talking about, um, Osa? Um, a little like I had to see him. I don't remember all the characters. The Wire. Mm-hmm. You you don't remember yeah. the Wire? I don't remember. I ain't watching, man. I, which one? Was, I used to live in Baltimore. Which one was Clay Davis? Which one was Clay Davis? Hold on, I'm about to pull him up. He was. I watched the Wire. I just don't remember. That was a long time ago. That was a good series, bro. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um, let me show you him, man. Um, this hold on. This is Clay. She. She. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I remember. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It, oh yeah. It's it's different being a, a councilman on that side of town. I will give him that. Like on that side of town, you know what I'm saying? Like your constituents are different. Your constituents yeah. are different. Shout out to Bug Off, man. Salute. Um, shout out to A Name. He said she. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's just different, man. It's just different, man. Like your your, your politics, you over there, they don't care about, you know, um protocol. Yeah, order. Yeah, yeah, they care about like yo. Twenty people been killed in this one neighborhood this year. All but, in the street murder. You know what I'm saying? Clay Davis um, knew about the debauchery in the neighborhood, man, and he still he still went hard in the paint for them people, man. I just don't yeah. understand folk like that. But it, it it you gotta be you, it's like Mayor Barry. He was the um, Marion Barry. He was the um, city councilman over there for a long time after he was no longer the mayor. This was his yeah. ward. Same ward, ward um, yeah. Eight. Yeah, he and he and he um, you know what I'm saying? Like he just got it's a, you you the type of guy that's gonna be the ward. You got you gonna be a man of the people. You gonna be like them. Crayon White allegedly accepting envelopes with cash inside anywhere from $5,000 to $15,000. Now, the FBI says they have White accepting these bribes on video. Now, the 40 year old was released today by federal judge Gene Michael Harvey, and he was covered by supporters as he left court this afternoon. Some supporters yelling that they loved him as he was placed in a car. As the car departed, they chanted, Ward. And you a- know they're going to love him more, right? It's the same yeah. thing with Barry. Once yeah. Barry got caught up with that, he was like, every, all over the country, people, he was a laughing stock. He was a joke. He was a bit in every comedian's routine. But in D.C., man, the love, the love he got, man, um, was He's just still mayor man. for life. They just yeah. changed. Um, they just changed this year. They just changed Good Hope Road to his name, uh, Marionberry Avenue. Yep. yep, yep. He he got a statue and everything, man. Um, downtown too. Listen, they love their criminals. Listen, nah. I'm like I said the other day. He's a great. He he's our. He's our um, great politician, man. He's our he's our Obama. He's our you know what I'm saying. He's he's our George Washington, man. He's OJ our got love. He's our, he's, he's, he's our Robert E. Lee. Yeah, our founding father, man. Because you got to remember, DC is a um, was is is a, is a district of Columbia. We didn't start getting mayors until the seventies. So we was run by the federal government before that. So he he um he's one of he, I think he's our second or I think he's our second man or third man, but whatever. And he was listen, man, skilled politician, um snick, uh, um southern leadership, um whatever that thing is down with Martin Luther King. Yeah, SCLC, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. down with all that. He was big with all that. He got a chemistry degree. Um career politician man he's um we talking about somebody who um is like you know other than that other, i mean he he's a man he he's 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 from mississippi but we've adopted him man and this guy too he's going to his profile's going to raise and he's going to become more popular 
once the man it's like the bill cosby syndrome bill cosby said pull your pants up black folk hated him for 10 years bill cosby got indicted um for um sexual assault on 60 women the white man trying to take him down and all the black people came to his rescue yeah. so wait you thinking he gonna become more popular as a result of this oh hell yeah hell Fuck. yeah the hell is yeah. there hell yeah one thousand percent Man, those people in like DC think way too different, man. No, that's crazy. I think black people everywhere are like nah, some people. Just, yeah, respect the hustle. Yeah, I mean, it's no, it's not even the hustle. It's the white man after you now. So we gotta, like, whenever, like, it's you against the white man, which is the system. You are you a renegade? Yeah, it's a they gonna yeah insane. they gonna call it a witch hunt. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a witch hunt now and him. conspiracy, right? Yeah, and he and he, and 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 the, and he and, and the people are um you you one of us, you know what I'm saying? You ain't no hoity toity politician. You one of us, yo. Trust me, yo. He's going to be. He's definitely if if he doesn't get um jailed and he can run again, oh, he's definitely winning again. Now if they block him up. And if they let him out, and he still, if they put don't put stipulations that oh you can't run for office again, yeah. Yo, well, he's, he's still running his campaign him. now. That's the thing. He's still in the position where he can still win. He can still run right nah, now. Nah, 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 nah. they nah. The head of the uh the head of the DC Council. He's like already like nah. He's out. They're putting together an ad hoc committee. Thank God. To to try to get him yeah to get him out of there. Nah, he he ain't coming back for this term. Maybe yeah. you know ten years. That's good. Time. Yeah, they want him out. Yeah, they want him out. A couple of them. The mayor wasn't even fucking with him like that. Like he's not in a nah. <laughs> Yeah, well, hopefully, if the mayor, hopefully, if the mayor is not messing with the man, I hope his constituents don't. Mm. Yeah, salute to Don Wrinkles, man. He says it's not who votes that counts; it who's kids who counts the votes. (laughs) Said we call it facts, facts. Eight. So how did White get caught up in this FBI investigation? Court documents say a company owner in D.C. was facing federal charges for stealing pandemic relief funds and agreed. That's how I got caught up with my big weed case. A dude I was slanging to just, you know, I was selling pounds and, and halves and quarters. He was buying QPs from me. He was coming from VA buying QPs for me for like four fifty. dollars um, but he was he was selling it out VA, so he was killing it. Um, and this was that good Arizona bud, right? Um, he he leaves my house and he gets um he's driving out to Loudoun County. He gets pulled over and he gets caught with the weed. And they ask him, you know, who you getting it from? And you know, we can work things out if you could take us to your big man, right? And that's what ended up leading him to me and him not wanting to come into D.C. and wanting me to come out to Virginia now. Now, all of a sudden, and I didn't peep game because I was I'm a, dumb as a brick, you know, young young dude. I didn't peep game. All of a sudden, he came to D.C. like 10, 15 times. Then all of a sudden, I got to come out there. And it's now it's not QPs. He want two pounds. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it was, it was, I should have seen it, but I was too, too young and too greedy. But yeah, that happened to me. That's how it happens. It's it's the other guy that gets caught that leads to you getting jammed up. Get caught up in this FBI investigation. Court documents say a company owner in DC was facing federal charges for stealing pandemic relief funds and agreed to disclose all of his illegal doing. I didn't say 450 a pound. I said 450 for a quarter pound. Investigation. Court documents say a company owner in D.C. was facing federal charges for stealing pandemic relief funds and agreed to disclose all of his illegal doings in exchange for a plea deal. The person agreed to work with the FBI and recorded the interactions with White. The Ward 8 council member allegedly accepted four. I saw the guy at, a, at D.C. Live. Remember, D, not D.C. Live. Remember Love? Love and it, it changed the dream. You remember that club in Ivy City? Osa? 
Club Love? Oh, yo, you probably don't remember that. But it's I a remember club I came Love. down there before. A famous club in D.C. called Club Love, and it was in um, Ivy City. And um, I, I used to go there, you know what I'm saying? And um, listen, I saw him. I saw him at the club one day he was um it wasn't in the club it was outside it wasn't in the line i was like looking for a parking space circling the block looking for a parking space and i saw his ass i was like yo what's up man he was like oh man i'm so sorry man he didn't even say what's up he said man i'm so sorry man man they i had to man i had to man he kept walking he started walking off and he's like man i had to i had to man they ain't got me no choice man i had to i had to you know what I'm saying? They, you know, and he was just copping, pleasing, and everything, and walking off, and everything. And I, and I was just like, "Damn!" And we was, I had, a, you know, some people with me. We looking through, looking for um, a, a spot and everything. And he just dipped in the cut and whatnot. And I was just like, I never seen him again after that moment. But yeah, he knew what was up. As soon as he seen me, he knew what the deal was because he didn't testify in court because I copped. The only reason, he, if I had taken it to trial, he was going to have to testify. So he already knew. He was ready to testify on me. And he set me up with the, he set me up with the um, undercover. Every time I, every time I went out to Virginia and sold him the weed, it was another guy in the car with him. And the first time I sold him um, a pound, um, I, the next time I sold him a pound, straight cash the dude gave me the money and um i gave the dude the drugs he's like yes yeah, my man da, da, da. and then the third time they made the transaction both of them hopped out the car and like fast cars squad cars pulled up and just um uh surrounded the car and everybody jumped out with their long guns it was like freeze don't move put your hands out the window freeze don't move put your hands out the window i'm sitting in the back of the suv by myself I'm like, where the fuck did these two niggas go? Did they just evaporate? But it was like that was part of the thing. Once they made the third transaction, they had me. They didn't want. They needed. They didn't need one. They needed two. They needed three transactions so they could nail me to the wall. And um, that's what happened. Soon as I, soon as I handed them that that um pound for that third transaction, that nigga took that pound, opened the door, and. Dipped out. I'm talking about like ducked out the door, and my man ducked out the other door, and like two seconds later, we was I was surrounded by flashing lights and long guns. Hey, uh, do you blame old buddy for cooperating with the police? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I would have cooperated with the police, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, I I, I blame him because we were cool. This was a college buddy. This was the dude I went to college with. He was a good friend of mine in college, and you know what I'm saying we had um, been cool. And he he was I was from DC and he's from Virginia, so we was cool down at school in Richmond, and we bonded over that. You know, you no, know, North Virginia is like kind of like DC's cousin. So we bonded over that, and um, he was cool the whole time in college, and I sold weed to him down there because I used to sell weed in college um, to some degree. You know what I'm saying, um, but um, it was cool, man. We wasn't best friends or nothing like that, but we was cool. And then once we, uh, once I came up, came once I came back to DC, and he came back to North Virginia, we ended up hooking up and over the weed, and he, you know, da da. Then next, then that happened. That that episode of our that chapter of our relationship or friendship happened. But um, yeah, man. Um, that's what just to, not to belabor the point. But that's that's how it happens a lot of times. It don't be the mistakes you make. It be the mistakes somebody you trust makes that gets you jammed up. Now, the FBI says they have White accepting these bribes on a video. Now, the 40 year old was released today by federal judge Gene Michael Harvey, and he was covered by supporters as he left court this afternoon. Some supporters yelling that they loved him as he was placed in a car. As the car departed, they chanted Ward 8. So how did White get caught up in this FBI investigation? Court documents say a company owner in D.C. was facing federal charges for stealing pandemic relief funds and agreed to disclose all of his illegal doings in exchange for a plea deal. The person agreed to work with the FBI and recorded the interactions with White. The Ward 8 council member allegedly accepted four cash payments 
of $35,000 each between June and August. In exchange, White would use his position as a council member to pressure government employees at the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement and the Department of Youth and Rehabilitation Services to extend several DC contracts. Those contracts were valued at $5.2 million and were intended to provide- Shit. Billions. He was in charge of that? No, the, the the people who were driving them were were had had grants from the government for their little programs, and I've been involved in that too. I when I when I came home from from jail in what two thousand and six, they put me in an ex offender program. I was in there with um and and I ended up working for them after the program was over. They kept me on um as as an employee for the for the for the program um doing like um administrative work right um and i was the only nigga in the pro program they found a job that's crazy it was them giving it to me that shows you how crazy those programs are i was the only nigga that they found a job um and um anyway uh that program i sat in on one of their meetings with the board of directors and their board of directors was like um doctors and lawyers from the community and they were um you know like going over the numbers and they had all these benchmarks they had to meet they had to make contact with this many ex-offenders they had to um give this many people job training they had to um have this many people come in and fill out um forms intake forms and shit like that so they had all these benchmarks and they were like the guys who were running the program, not on the board, but the other guys that were running the program, the face of the program, they had to answer to this board. And I sat in on one of the board meetings. I was like, yo, this shit is deep. Yo, it's a lot of people got their hands in this pot because they were getting um something like several million dollars a year too. But um, they had to renew it. In order to get it each year, you had to meet these certain benchmarks and you had to show you had to show that you had reached these benchmarks in order to get your next, um, you know, re-up for the next year. They wouldn't just give it to you. You had to, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of stuff with this, and I'm sure they fudging the numbers. If you can get one of them grants, you can pay all your buddies $100,000 a year contracts. Like, I could say, Osa, you my liaison of inner city outreach, and your salary is... Eighty thousand dollars a year, and I could say, you know, what I'm saying, and and all you got to do, and I could get you an office where you go, you got a computer, laptop, and everything, and you just go there and fucking surf the net all day. What job can you get me, Ark? You know what I'm saying, but that's the type of stuff that goes on. But at the end of the year, they're going to want these certain benchmarks that they that we agreed to when we got the grant. And in order to <laughs> – and the, listen, the, the, the program I was with, they fudged it a little bit, but they, they tried to get it. But it's almost impossible to get it because you're dealing with niggas. You're dealing with criminal niggas and ex-offenders and street people. So it's almost impossible to reach your benchmarks of showing that you've affected the community in a positive way. And so you got to fudge it a little bit. But I'm sure there's programs that fudge the whole thing, that fudge all the numbers, that just sit around and surf the net. And, and people are making and, and, and give their boys um, salaries and shit that come off of the grant because you have to hire a staff. They gonna if they give you a million dollars for the year, that's for your staff. That's for your facilities. That's for your outreach. That's for flyers. That's for if you throw a cookout. That's for the chicken and the grill and the aluminum foil and the potato chips and the rent out the um, park for that day or whatever the fuck you need. You got money and you have to spend a certain amount every year. The easiest way to spend that money is on salaries. Because if you spend it on outreach, you got to actually do all this shit. You got to go here and do this thing. You got to throw this. You got to buy a jungle, a fucking this thing. You know what I'm saying? Easiest yeah, way to. That chick <laughs> Tiffany Hanger. 
Yeah. 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 I've been, listen, I've been blessed to be, to, to have seen a lot of this stuff, like Forrest Gump a little bit, you know what I'm saying, like the Black Forrest Gump. But I, I listen, I, listen, I am not bullshitting you, man. I've been inside, um, um, around these, these programs, um, um, and, and listen, man, it's, it's, it's hustle work. Hold on. Hold on. Yo, how did you say you knew this guy? Was it Osa? Oh, I don't know this guy. I just, I just was at a, at a, at a, um, at an event where they were trying to save this hospital from getting closed, and he was there. He was like the, the main guy there, and I was just, I was just there. I wasn't part of it. I was just there to, to you know, at the event. There was a go-go band there. There was a lot of food and all this stuff. And, you no, know, like a, you know, it was just like an event. So I was just there, and he was there. That's how I know. Him. That's the only time I've been around him. But when he was at the event, he was definitely hustling, right? I mean, he was just doing, he was just speaking. He got on the mic and spoke and gave a speech and, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. He, he didn't, he, he wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? He, he was just there to speak to the people and like rile up the crowd and get to energize the crowd. Um, but yeah, man, um, I, I got to do something right quick. Um, hold it down for me, right? And I don't see how clowns like this is actually effective for the community, man. I know people know about clowns like this, man. This shit's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I think this shit going to continue, man. And I think it's only going to get worse. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, shit, he making that paper, man. If they like it, I love it. Fuck it. It's like that in every Democratic-ran city. Yeah. But that's Look, just Philly, shit, man. Philly is one of the most corrupt cities. You sure it ain't worse than Chicago, man? <laughs> Shit, I know Chicago all kinds of fucked up. Especially when it comes to corruption. Yeah, it's almost silly to argue about which Democratic city is the worst. Seattle, Chicago, Portland, L.A., New York. <sighs> yeah, they all shitty. Yeah. But... Those motherfuckers do turn out and vote. That's one damn thing for sure. Those people don't gonna really put numbers on the board. And even if they don't, they got the computer systems. I mean, shit. And a lot of time on times, man, I'm seeing a lot of stuff on this internet, man, talking about how in the world black women ain't voting for Kamala and whatnot. I know damn well, man, all black folk voting for that woman, man. It's already set in stone. Yeah, it's it's like, like, it's like it's this. Not Say what again? She's not getting my vote. That's for damn sure. Yeah, but I know it's all that sentiment that I see online. I know that's only a drop in the bucket. I know black women and black men overwhelmingly gonna vote. You know, Kamala this ticket, man. Oh, it, yeah. It's inevitable. You know what I'm saying? But all that talk about that's against us, man, I wouldn't even pay it too much of mind, man. I already know where the hell they vote is going. For real. Yeah. Especially clowns just like this. I wonder where we're looking at right there on the screen. Yeah, you got to check out the chick, uh, what's her name, Tiffany Hingert out in Illinois. Oh, she is just, oh, she's horrible. Horrible. Yeah, but shit. yeah, it always seems to get worse too. It's only gonna get worse. Yeah, Man, but imagine those, she got the grip on power, though. You know what I'm saying? Didn't she just rehire that police chief that uh they tried to force to resign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man, she's still in control, that. man. She's still running this, man. Even though everybody know this broad is corrupt. They already know this broad is doggone. She, she's full of nothing but dysfunction, man. But you know what? She's still in power right now. 
And the only yeah. reason why she in there is because they had a, such a low low to turnout, man. I mean, she basically ran unopposed. Pretty much. Yeah. So, I mean, it's easy for black women to get in these positions, man. If nobody ain't, she don't really got no opposition. You know what I'm saying? White people don't yeah. even stand up in this country, man. Shit. Yeah, they, they willing to let this motherfucker run into the ground. You know what I mean? But she yeah. totally threatened uh, the, the competitors, the sun women in her neighborhood. Yeah, but there only was twenty nine hundred people that came out to vote, man. And she got more than damn. She got enough to fucking dog on win. Just know that. Yeah. But that just goes to show, man, all those people that's in them city council meetings, man, talking shit. Where were y'all when it was time to vote? Tiffany hit it in there. She in there. Now y'all sit down and shut the fuck up. That's one of the world I think. And then when that time comes around, man, hey, vote accordingly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A hard head makes a soft ass. Yeah, that's the damn show. She had Philly the mayor put out this program. I think the I think the budget was like thirteen million or something like that to do some improvements around the city over a certain you know a certain period of time, a few months. So I believe I believe it began in Jan- I'm sorry, not January, but in June. And I have not seen any of these cleaning crews anywhere doing anything. And they put up these clips. They have these clips online. Where it just looked like they just took, you know, they took like a few seconds of just like trash men picking up trash on a regular trash day doing, you know, their regular routines and use that as a front to say, oh, OK, well, this is how the money's being spent. This is what's actually taking place. We are doing something when they're actually doing nothing. Yeah, that definitely goes on in my city for sure. Good God. That's a sad reality, man. And you know where that, yeah, and you know where that money's going, right into their pockets. Hey, that's keeping the lights on. Shit. <laughs> Apparently, it's keeping the lights on. Hey, the man, that's enough to keep them motherfuckers voting for them damn people, man. Dude, what's true, man? Hey, as long as they got control of the media, man, shoot, man, they can paint whatever picture they want on that damn screen, man. Hey. People are gonna vote accordingly. That's one damn thing for sure. But man, you gotta give it to Democrats, man. They are so they are good at what they do. They are They're very good. When they how they manipulate the media, man. I don't know if it's just the whites or the Jews. I don't know which one. I mean the Jews crew. I don't know which one is more effective. But man, they are good at what they do. They can manipulate everybody into believing a lie. Kamala came out of nowhere, you know, as vice president, three years doing nothing. Never heard of this chick, man. And all of a sudden, she popular? Get out of That just, the mainstream media is the just, entire, they are elegant in what they do. Familiar? The entire apparatus is propping her up. And I, they are I elegant. Like the polls that say she's really surging, they're just lying to us and hoping it works. But it didn't work when they tried it with Hillary, so I don't know. Oh, uh, it did work when it was, you know, was with Hillary, man. But Trump was just, he was a powerhouse at that time. We never heard things like that in, you know, in the mainstream media like that. We never heard, we was galvanized when he came off that escalator, man, in 2015. Right. That was a different time. But the media, man, they adjusted. Man, they did. Man, hey, man. Dude, they dog gonna push. Sure That's when I first noticed the, how you know powerful the media was. Whenever Trump ran, I didn't know nothing about how powerful the media was until Trump ran. That's why I still support him today because I well, actually seen. I followed this over all these years since 2015. Whether or not the media sways people' opinion, they have the control over the votes. Like that quote said, whoever counts the votes, they're the, the real winners. So I think yeah. Stalin said something like that. I think yeah, it Stalin, Stalin, it doesn't matter whose it's votes, Stalin. it's about who counts the votes. It's a com- communist quote. 
Exactly. It's all about who counts the vote. And hey, it's is he lying? Guy. No, he's not lying. No, no. It's this guy. It's this guy on uh on Instagram. His his tag is um a hundred a hundred. Well, he spells it a hundred days of summer. He gives. He he probably has about six or different seven six to six six or seven different posts where he actually breaks down how they came in, you know, they how they came up with the whole democratic movement. I mean, this guy got paperwork, he has names, everything. It's pretty interesting though. If you guys get the chance, check it out. I'll put the um I'll put his tag in it in the, uh in the chat though, but it's it's pretty interesting though how, how it all got started. Yeah, I'm not gonna check it out, man. You know, that'll be worthwhile, right there. Violence intervention services here in the district. Now, White chairs the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs, which oversees several agencies, including DYRS. In the recorded interactions, he mentioned several times how he's trusted when he comes to these kinds of issues. Now, these court documents also indicate that it was White himself who suggested to the company owner that they needed to expand and try to get contracts in other areas like housing and mental health. He called housing a, quote, cash cow. Now, the person working with the FBI says that he also gave White other types of gifts, like uh, he was able to take him to uh, gifts like trips to the Dominican Republic as well as Las Vegas. White could face a maximum of 15 years in prison. He also might have to pay three times the amount that they say he took. He's due back here in federal court on September 19th. Simone? I mean, his arrest, the charges, shocking. Of course, he is poised to win a third term in November, and that election is just about 60 days away. Rafa, thanks for your reporting tonight. We appreciate it. Well, moments after the case against Councilmember White was unsealed, Mayor Muriel Bowser spoke to reporters at an unrelated event. Here's what she had to say. Well, I mean, I, I could state the obvious, but um, so maybe I will. It is it's very Here troubling. It comes. It's very disappointed. Um, I'm sure that constituents across the city, but especially in Ward 8, are very disappointed. Uh, people need representation. Um, they need people that go down to the Wilson building and put them first and fight for them. And I know that I, I speak for them in my uh, dis disappointment about it. And I'm going to, anytime any part of the government is questioned in this way, it distracts from the very important work that has to be done. Don't uh, if we the are government. talking about offices that are focused on keeping people out of harm's way, um, preventing violence, especially with our focus on alternatives to um, law enforcement strategies, which we're very committed to. Uh, this also puts those very effective strategies at risk. So individual decisions and people will make some good ones, some terrible ones, uh, but they have to be held accountable. In the last 90 minutes, D.C. Council Chairman Phil Mendelson called the charges, quote, deeply disturbing. He says he's working on a committee to assess the situation, investigate and make any recommendations to the full council. White's arrest is the topic of discussion in many communities in our region, and that includes the ward that he represents. Our Lionel Donovan continues our live team coverage. He is in Ward 8 with brand new reaction. Lionel, give us a feel here. What's the community White represents saying this afternoon now that we know some more details on the arrest? Good afternoon, Simone. Well, like Rafa was saying, support for Council Member White is strong here in Ward 8, the community that he was born and raised in. I've When I tell you, <laughs> I told you, the support is strong for him and his community. The arrest. Good afternoon, Simone. Well, like Rafa was saying, support for Council Member White is strong here in Ward 8, the community that he was born and raised in. I've been in the Southeast today talking to folks about the arrest, and many are saying that they hope White gets through this. I actually heard from one gentleman who said that he would vote for White again if he had the opportunity. So for now, <laughs> let's hear from Ward 8 residents wow. themselves Free about the situation. Boy.
understand his intentions and what he was trying to do for the community award eight but i also feel that you chose the wrong direction to go if if Treyon white was doing whatever he was doing to prevent violence in the district <laughs> i feel as though you know he, he should have some grace i might yep. probably be trying to do something for us but you know you can't strong arm the system so it sounds like many are saying that although Treyon White might have done something wrong, he did it for a good reason. Now, as Rafa was saying rich. earlier, uh, the charges that White get no time. carry a maximum prison sentence of 15 years. And the next hearing is scheduled for September 